series is called Big Appetites. Yes. And so where did you get the inspiration for this series? Well, you know, a lot of the inspiration came from my childhood. You know, when I was a kid, there was so much TV and so many movies that had little people in normal-sized worlds. You know, it's Honey, I Shrunk the Kids and The Incredible Shrinking Woman. So I guess around 2002, I was in London and I saw an exhibit that had tiny little figures and I started to think about doing that. and. It took me a few years to work out the lighting, which is really hard to do on this series, but that was really the original genesis of this series. So uh, you combine these miniatures um, with, with food. With so food. how did that connection happen? You know, the original thought about food was that it's just really beautiful. And the truth is it's not. When you start to look at it under macro lenses, it's just really, you know, there's a lot of digital cleanup to do later. But as this series has become really popular, I mean, it's been in 90 countries around the world now, that when you put those two things together, toys and food, it becomes a really powerful thing. Because what do we all know? Regardless of, you know, language or culture or social status, we all know food. We all know toys. Yep. So you put those things together and they're instantly accessible to everybody. And the internet also helped push the accessibility of big appetites even further. The images were first seen on a website, 500 Pixels, based here in Toronto, and an editor in the UK saw them, and then they were in the British press, and then they kind of syndicated across the world. Although his pictures have had viral appeal on the internet, Christopher still enjoys the connection of meeting people who have connected with his work. A lot of this has been over the web. You know, I have a lot of likes on Facebook and social media, and I get a lot of emails from journalists and from people that just love their work. But to actually go and meet the people is just great. And, and again, Toronto has been so important for this project going viral that I just feel like it's great to come to Toronto and meet the people here, the gallery here that's been such a, a champion of the work and, and all the people that have just loved it. And hopefully more will come to love it as Christopher prepares a book of these pictures, which he hopes to release in the new year. And the publisher wants all this new work, so I've been shooting like a madman for months now. So I have a long list of the foods that I want to do, and I kind of... I even find myself, if I'm in restaurants now, where somebody puts down a plate of food, I start to think about, uh, and if I haven't been shooting in a while, I feel guilty. Like, I need to figure out how to shoot this, you know? And that curious fascination is something that Chris hopes will transfer to how people see the world around them. Our eyes are the most powerful things that we use. That's our most powerful, dominant sense. But we don't really see a lot all the time. And I think it's just a matter of looking really closer at things and, and just kind of using our imagination to figure out what, what, could, what the possibilities are. Um, a plate of food could be all potential.